Ladies and gents, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. We're back. It's been a week since the the game against Ajax. Um, we had the midweek game against Panathinaikos as well. That ended 1-1. We had Alexis Guia's press conference. We've had a hell of a lot of transfer talk going on in the past week. Lots to get through today. Um, most of all, today's order of business, the game against Kifisia, Olympiacos won the game 3-2 in a five-goal thriller. Five goals that were allowed for Olympiacos. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, I'm your host, Costa. I'm joined by none other than Aris Boulibasis and Marshal Debord joining us from France. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, Ari, good to have you back, I want to say. It's been a while since you and I have been on a show together. It feels like a while, at least, since I've, I, I've been uh, MIA the last at least couple weeks, but it feels like an eternity almost, but it's good to be back. Good to see your lovely faces. Marshall, what's going on? Are you watching the end of the other game? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm watching that. I like Panathinaikos game. Interesting one, if I have to say. But is it still one one over there? No, it's, it's two one two. two. Panathinaikos leading. Okay. Anyway, um, let's let's maybe start with a bit of uh, housekeeping, um, guys. If you haven't done so already, show your appreciation. Hit the like button down below. It really helps us to spread the word, spread the love, find more Olympiacos fans around the world to join the channel. If you haven't subscribed hit the button as well, hit the bell as well to make sure you get notifications every time we go live or if a new video comes up. And also check out our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash gate seven international. You'll find lots of stuff there that we don't normally put up on our YouTube from $1 a month to $5 a month. You can join our WhatsApp group for $1 a month. You get access, early access to some um rather some information that we don't always put out on our socials or some information that we don't share via this channel so uh, lots that you can gain just by giving us one uh one dollar a month uh ari want to say more about patreon yes uh we always want to thank our patrons uh, everyone that's supporting us you guys let us help level up the content that we provide and we like to try a lot of new things you guys have seen some of the stuff that we've tried where it, literally it's everything, anything that you do to help us. We just try to put everything back into the show. And we would like to thank our three newest patrons, uh, Adonis Chuvalakis, Zois Moschonas, and Mitz. I'm, I'm guessing that's for Mitzo, Xurikis. So thank you to our newest patrons. Uh, patron, Patreon is growing. The That community is growing. A lot of fun stuff there. Don't forget you get early access to the scouting reports as well. Uh, once we get information that somebody is actually coming, we prepare the scouting report and it goes live as soon as it's available and ready. Patrons get to see it. And then once the players announced, it's available for everybody else. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a $10 a month tier. That's a merch tier. You get a special, special piece of merch, the first of which is coming out soon. The store, we know it was delayed. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues that went along with the the integration to one of the service electronic services we're using and that has required some additional information and support to get that fixed it is finally fixed we are hoping that if everything goes well we will have the shop live next week we're really excited about that so uh if you guys are looking for some fun merch we have some great options and more stuff that will be coming on the way with that as well so thank you everyone for the support and we look forward to you guys checking out our new store Nice. I'm really pumped for that too, mate. Can't wait to have a look at that merch. Um, I've seen some uh, previews of what's coming out. And all I have to say is to people watching, people listening, you're not ready. You're not ready. So brace yourselves for when that merch comes online. Ari's done an incredible job um, talking to people and making sure that happens. And really just, you're not ready. You're not ready for that. So watch this space, uh, merch coming soon um right let's talk about today's game i see that the chat's already going off people are asking about transfers uh mike scob thank you so much another donation from mike thank you for the beer coffee uh whatever it is um today was special he says with all the poop happening okay um 
let's let's get into it. So the first thing I want to say about today's game is that going into it, I felt like, you know, we've been asking ourselves the, the, the question all of January, when is Olympiagos actually going to turn up in 2024? Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, uh, looking at our fixture list and, and the way that we've been in general since Martinez left, I was I would not have been surprised if January went, you know, we went through January without a win. Um, and with everything that's just been going off, uh, going on, on the pitch, but not football. Everything that's had to do with with the decisions, the goals that have been chalked off, the ref decisions, and all of that. Um, I think it was absolutely vital that we got the win today, and I think the manner and the fashion in which we got it at the end. I want to believe that it's going to be a confidence boost, even going into the game on Wednesday against Panathinaikos. Um, as difficult as they're going to make it to me, to me, and I think to everyone, even e- even the ones that are like the least suspicious, um, there, there's clearly something going on for me. Like they're they're clearly instructions to try and make it as difficult for us as possible. And if there's any anything they can find, um, they're gonna they're gonna find it and they're gonna screw us. And if they can't find something, they're gonna make it up because. And I'm sorry, I'm going. We, we don't we don't like to talk about refereeing decisions on this show. We we like to talk about football, but you can't ignore what your eyes see, and particularly on the goal that's been chalked off, um, El Arabi's goal that's been chalked off. I, I just cannot see how there is an offside when there are two blue players in front of the line that's been drawn. For one, and and there's many other things that that have been said, um, but footballing wise, and I'll and I'll let somebody else speak. I like the way that we went into the game, um, particularly. I think you know players like Masuras were really leading the charge in terms of you know the way he was pressing. He was relentless in his running, making intelligence run, intelligent runs, pressing, getting up and down the wing, tracking back. It, it, it gave me captain vibes like from him, and I really. You know, we. I think I think all Olympiacos fans have found themselves in a situation where they've sworn at Masuras or said something negative about him. But honestly, like he is a player that I would be happy if he was always on our squad. And he's out of contract. I'm saying that, knowing that he's out of contract at the end of the summer, still hasn't renewed. He's one of the last, like, few players on this roster that understands what it means to put on an Olympiacos jersey and to give everything. And and it's epitomised afterwards in the goal that he scores, which is a lovely goal, like a, a, a lovely like team goal down the right-hand side, good interplay, Fortunis into, into Carvalho, Carvalho then one touch into Masuras, who smashes it with his left foot and it just rises into the corner. And you're there like in almost in disbelief at the goal that he scored. He doesn't score many from outside the box. I don't... Re- I don't think he, I can't remember actually. I've never seen him score a goal like that. But it's what I said on the last show as well. If if Masuras has to think, he's like he's more likely to screw it up. If he just hits the first time, boom, and he scores a goal like that. So that's 1-0, then it's 2-0 uh, from the penalty spot. And you think this is going to be an easy one. Like, game's done and dusted. And then Retos gets a second yellow. And then we have the the roller coaster just just starts from there. But you know, I wanted to focus a little bit on the beginning of the game and how we went into it. Uh, I think it's, it's it's clearly by far the best we've played since coming back from uh, from the Christmas break. Um, and you know, there was life. There was life in the team, and there was energy. Yes, we were playing against Kifisia. Yes, we're playing against a newly promoted side, but it really doesn't matter, in my view. Like you have to go out there, you have to be serious, you have to be focused. Players have to be concentrated, and and they were. Then the game went tits up, and you know the the rest we can we can talk about. But Marshall, what are your feelings like? First impression. Uh, well, <laughs> First of all, I agree with you because it's a big win for me, I would say. Uh, I don't like this word, but it might be a turning point in the season. We'll see probably next week against Panathinaikos because when you have so many opposite uh, events on a game, like red card, uh, penalty denied, goal denied, uh, penalty against you, and you still win that, 
it's massive. Uh, and I also agree with pretty much whole what you, the whole what you said. Uh, first of all, on Masuras, uh, let's not forget also the, the, the we've talked a lot about the disallowed goal it had against Aik, but not the goal itself, like the quality of the goal, uh, the, I don't know the word in English, the, the, the control and the, the finish he had was amazing. And today was an amazing goal, probably one of the, one of his most beautiful goals with Olympiakos. And I, I totally agree on the caps and material, material because uh, today, apart from the win, it showed that El Arabi and Masuras both uh, came in to help the team when it was the most needed. Meaning, we had to face like uh, opposite events, and we needed to win anyway. We needed to have the nerve control because if you take a look at that second half, we probably had like four or five clear situations. We scored like the El Arabi, the solid goal, the one in which Masuras touches the ball with uh, his hand or his arm. So we, we did score a lot of goals. So that was the, the good point for me. And you also uh, mentioned Rezos, and that's the big issue for me with the defending, because either is from Rezos or Ndoy, they do have that uh, bad boy defender playing style that I don't like. And it will always... Uh, end up in cards, penalties, falls, and stuff, because I don't see an evolution on that. I don't know where... For Mendoy, I think it's part of his playing style since a long time. He has been aggressive uh, since he's been playing with the B team, probably. But Red Source, I don't understand why he's trying to do to play like that. Because we all know he's a modern defender. He can pass the ball. He, can, he has a good passing abilities. And he's stuck on that too aggressive way of playing style because he, I, I've counted is like on uh, 11 yellow cards on 26 game, including two red cards, the one in Volos and the one today. And that's too much because when you said it before, Costa, when the referee is trying to find something every time to punish you, you have to... I, I know it's easier to say than doing it, but you have to overcome that you have to be uh, like Thiago Mota if I if I can say that you know making those small falls in the midfield that the, the one kind of fall that don't don't end up in a yellow card instead of playing with the harms like that and it also applies to Biancon the way he defended on that penalty because you, it's always like that yeah you know that with VAR the referee will, will look into <laughs> the smallest thing ever to call a fall or a penalty. So when I saw the first replay, I knew it was going to be a PK. It reminded me of that Holdebas handball against Porto uh, in the COVID Champions League. You mean Rafinha? No, Holdebas on the corner, if I remember. I think it was in Caracas. So I remember the Rafinha. Oh, no, Porto. Um, that's right. Rafinha was Marseille. Was Marseille. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. But it, Marseille is the same. You know, when you touch yeah. the ball with the hand, Automatically, yes. almost end up in penalty. But yeah, Masuras, the, the question you, you said also at the end with the contract, when you think about like Fortunis out of contract, Podense is, is on loan, and you have Masuras out of contract. And the question I had watching this game is, is, is Masuras the, the best option to renew on those three? Because is, and the other question would be, is Masuras sustainable if Fortunis stay and keeps the home band and the leadership of the, the team on the field. I don't know. Well, I before before I go into some stats about Masuras, I don't I don't know if I think that Masuras would be like captain material if that's what you were kind of insinuating with. Um I don't think he's captain material. He's another workhorse. But um I mean that's a discussion for a different time. Uh, really quickly, also, I wanted to thank we uh, a new patron, uh, ju literally just as we're recording here. So big shout out to our newest patron, uh, Mihari Roditis. So thank you so much for becoming our newest patron. We appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys, if you're popping in for the first time. A lot of you have come in and out. Uh, real quick, it costs you nothing, and it helps us um, 
uh, infinitely to find more people in this community and to continue to grow the red and white community. But regarding Masuras, Masuras is the player in Greece with the most uh, goals taken away by VAR. Masuras has had three goals since Volos that have been taken away by VAR. There is no team that has had more goals taken away by VAR than Olympiakos. Since Volos, Olympiakos has lost six goals, or at the very least, big goal scoring opportunities, including penalties not called, from VAR. Seven, if we include the Masuras goal that uh, we'll say the referee blew the whistle too early on, which couldn't be VAR reviewed from Ike. So it's. I know, I, I know, I know. We talk a lot about how since the new year and since Carvajal came in, the play has been stale. His tactics are what they are; they're nothing special. But it's really hard for me to look at 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 at, at him and say the tactics and his playing style are very poor, and we're not getting opportunities when you have seven goals that are taken from you. It, it's really hard for me to say that, and and today. If we go by the stats compared to everything, everything else, the the they were good, and but I think at, at at the same time we also have to to come from a perspective where we always look like when are we going to start playing good football? When are we going to start playing good football? That is not a question we should be asking for the rest of the season. If you keep asking that question and keep going into every game thinking we're going to just all of a sudden play like 1920 or 1819 Pedro Martins or or Ernesto Valverde when he was here, it's not happening. What we the only thing we can hope for is that we play efficiently and and that the players are on the field on the field playing with heart like they like they have been, I mean, not for full 90s, but at, at least they they were today and they were against Ike in towards towards the second half. And same thing, same thing that we saw against uh, Panathin Ikos previously. It's difficult for me to to complain about the, the tactics in that regard. But again, at the same time, I don't think that's something we should be. When are we going to see good football? We're not. And if we change a coach again because we have bad results, it's just going to make things worse. It is it is what it is. But I just wanted to point that out there that we've had a we've had more goal opportunities taken away than any other team in the Greek Super League in that interval and overall. It is it is what it is. I, I don't like talking about conspiracies, but that's the fact of the matter. I also have uh, I also have another quick thing for you guys i had a little i had time to throw in the el arabi offsides var into ai and i asked the ai if the lines were correct what do you guys think the ai said no it said the lines were off it said that the lines were not perpendicular to the field lines that's twice that's two what a, var what reviews. a surprise that's two VAR reviews. That's two. Yeah, two VAR reviews that I've put in. I haven't put in any other ones that the AI has said were off. They weren't. They weren't properly calibrated. It, it's so provocative, though. Like that. That that call was so. Like when you saw the lines, they were drawing them up for four or five minutes, and you think, okay, what the hell are they going to cook up now? Um. Manos, you asked about the Masuras goal that was chalked off. To be honest with you, um, having seen the replay, it appears to me that the ball grazes off his right arm. So perhaps, well, I think that was the right call. Then when they deny us the penalty, he got like the ref goes to the he goes to the to the video to watch it himself, and he says. It's a penalty. It's a penalty, like Carabinato, but we're checking for offside. Is that is that normal? Like by the book? So like, are they checking like it's a penalty? They're not checking if it's offside. They're checking if it's a penalty. So it's, like, it's a penalty or not? Can they check afterwards that it's offside? I I because I, like the rules with VAR are also quite quite strict. It's not like basketball where they're like, oh, he's in, he, you know, when did they take the shot? Is he three seconds in the key? But was there a foul? Like, 
Yeah, but today, for example, on Ajax goal, uh, Levi Garcia scored the goal and they checked the, the, the offside and they ended up calling a fall on Bernard at the beginning of the, the play. So I think they can f find pretty much everything. It's not the first time I've seen a PK being denied because of, of an onside. After a violence kind of, issue. Yeah, yeah, but it's kind of a gray zone, you know. Yeah. Because there's if you, no, if you, they, if they you don't say, they don't, there's no VAR rule about what you, yeah. what you're limited to review there. Like in American sports, when you go, when you go to the booth for video replay, it's for something specific. That's it. But there's no, in European VAR, and this is one of the issues with VAR because, because of how vague the rules are with VAR and how they, how they've been implemented. This is why we have so much disparity between how it's used everywhere and why people get so upset and why it hasn't fixed quite so many problems as we hoped it would because no you you can review whatever you want with var if you go to var for something and you see something else it can come up there's no there's no distinction so if they're looking up and say wait this guy might be off sides it's fair game they can do that it's it, it's not it's not a case of like but again, most American sports here, like like the NFL, like American football, like it's not as fluid as football is in the rest of the world, right? It play, there's a play, a sequence of offense and defense, and that's it. It's easier versus 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 in in football, like the rest of the world knows, things are a lot more fluid, and it's not as easy to break those phases down. But that's probably one of the problems with VAR. You can do whatever you want. You think they're going to going to the review booth for one thing, but then they're looking at like six hundred other things. Anything that they can, and and this is why it continues to pervade the idea that something is corrupt. Because, and I feel like this too. When it comes to Olympiacos and something gets getting reviewed, I always feel like they're going to find some way either not to give this to us or not to give or 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 to give something against us. And that's how it feels. What other team can say they've had seven goals or clear goal scoring opportunities taken away from them since Volos? What day was the Volos game? Here, I can pull it up right now. We played Volos in, that was December 3rd. In one, in, in a month and 10 days. Uh, in, in less than six weeks, we've had seven goals taken away from us. What other team can say that? Of course people are going to think, of course people are going to think there's corruption because it's been completely misused. But I have to say also, I've watched, football all weekend long like to handle whole weekend and the var issue is like global and yeah. we've seen we've we've seen it with the greek perspective but i do believe that nowadays the, the referee level global level is too low for the the sport that football has become like it's very quick uh you have a lot of lot more contacts and if you dig into every play you will find a fall you will find a yellow card a red card i don't know and that's the issue with var and lots of leagues have issue with that like i've watched like lyon losing to le Havre today with clear red card not called by the var and the, the var itself it's beginning to become an, uh, a clear issue on the referee level like in premier league too they have issues they have coaches complaining and stuff and they do but has any team in the Premier League lost seven goals in a month? No, nobody. No, I watch the Premier League. I can tell you yeah, that's not you, the case. You, you would need to compare with a with like PSG, for example, or the best team of a league that get that gets goal canceled. Like maybe Red Star in, in Serbia, or you know the equivalent of Olympiacos in a lower league, like Ajax, right. Eri Divizie. I don't know. Uh, Honestly, but I, I agree on the lines. The lines, the offset lines, are the most. Uh, uh, weird thing ever. I you, think see that, those like, you, you see that with the um, the Rodine offside, the right. angle where they've looked at the where they've looked at the situation is like clear. Like the lines are perpendicular. It's a straight like facing image. You can see the, the line. It's perpendicular, parallel, even to the to the line behind the goal. And then just the angle and the Alarabigo is. Is is like that? It, it just is completely ridiculous. Like it's 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 going around the world. Like we saw it got picked up in Turkey by some journalists, and it's a joke. Like it's a joke. And there's um, 
There's a new person in the chat. I want to say hello to Jacob Shared, who says the intro music is way too loud. Can you, you can turn down the volume a little bit, mate. Uh, I want to give also a <laughs> shout out. Shout out to Gus Drax, who made the soundtrack. It's obviously the Olympiacos uh, anthem that he's shredded out on an electric guitar. Um, thank you so much to to Gus Drax. Uh, check him out on Instagram. He's a legit, like, bona fide professional rock star. Um, thank you so much again. Can never say thank you enough to Gus for making that intro music for us. Uh, Jacob, welcome to the show. Uh, Jacob's also asking... <laughs> I'm new here. He says, "Why is the Greek league out to get Olympiakos?" Jacob, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna go through that one today, mate. That probably needs like a separate video or two, or maybe a Netflix series to explain that one. Um, but I did uh, email Netflix, by the way, guys. Just FYI, I emailed Netflix after the stuff that happened today. Uh, I did. I sent them an email. We'll see if they respond. Yeah. Um, I want to address a few of the comments. Maybe we can tackle some of the transfer ones because we can we can do those quickly and then get back to the game and, and some of the individual performances. Um, Frank Goodeight is asking, is Chiquinho coming in the summer? Uh, Frank, um, Fabrizio Romano tweeted um, about an hour ago, I think, confirming that it's a three-year contract signed and that he will be joining in the summer. Uh, if you want my opinion, I think there is a possibility that he might come sooner, but maybe that could be towards the end of the, the window in January, depending on the situation at Benfica. I understand they have some injuries in midfield and they don't want to let him go right now. So let, let's see. Um, we need to bring midfielders in for sure. We don't know what's going to happen with Madi Kamara as well, whether he's going to leave for free at the end of the end of the season or whether we're going to get some money for him now and, and ship him off. So um, let's see what happens there. But Chiquinho has signed a contract per Romano, three years. So that's that's Chiquinho news on um, Alex 50s asking about Gaston Hernandez. So Gaston Hernandez is a centre-back from Argentina that we were looking at in the summer as well. He's 25 years old. Uh, he's played 98 professional games, which is not that much for a 25-year-old. Um, as I said, we were looking at him in the summer, but the bids were rejected. So then we moved for Nicholas Freiro, whoop de doo And now it seems this guy's back on the radar because his contract is expiring in a year's time. And the facts are, or at least the facts that have been reported are, that we have made a bid of 2.7 million euros for 80% of his rights that have that bid has been rejected. And let's see if we're gonna go up a little bit more to to bring this player in. I did watch quite a lot of tape on this player when I um or back in the summer. Reminds me a bit of Retos in his prime, uh, able to bring the ball out from the back. Um good just in general, good with his feet, good passing range um run can run through the middle and typically aggressive like you would expect from from an argentinian center back last thing i'll say about gaston hernandez is that the team he plays for san lorenzo they conceded only 13 goals last season in the 27 game around robin of the argentinian clausura they had the best defense in the argentinian league and they finished third behind um a team i can't remember and then river plate that ended uh, the season on top. So um, it's we don't Rosario know. Rosario Central with Maxi Lovera. Was it Rosario? The, the champions in the Argentina, yeah. I thought they won the cup. Oh, I think it's a won the league. And doesn't matter. I think that was the cup. Uh, could be wrong, but. Um... Anyway, uh, I don't know if there are any other transfer questions that have popped up since we're on the topic. Otherwise, guys, yeah, there's been uh, talk about Al Masruti. Is that the name of the guy from uh, from Braga? I believe that was correct. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to say something uh, because I, I see the name on the, the resource name on the chat, and I wonder. I was wondering today that. Maybe what we need would be a specific member on the staff because we do have someone that is probably Champions League level in the club. It's Hernani, you know, the, 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 the physio. I don't know what's his role 
nutritionist uh, Hernani Gomez. We do have people very competent in the staff, but maybe yeah. what we lack currently would be, I don't know, a defender specific coach, a striker specific coach, but mainly a defender specific coach, because we do need to, uh, when you see Retzos playing, you, you know, you can see he has some qualities, but you just need to learn how to be calmer and same for Andoy and same for, I don't know, Porroso and stuff. But we don't have, and same apply for set pieces, for example, I know because in the past I've did articles about Pauk and I've talked with El Cadori in the past and told me Pauk had a, a set pieces coach, which is very specific. Like he, he, they do it on trainings many times. And it's no surprise that Luchescu scores a lot of goal on set pieces because they do work that on the trainings. And I've read on the, on the Greek press this week that Carvajal worked very hard on set pieces before the, I think it was before Palacinaico's game. Yeah. And we ended up eating, eating one goal on, set, on a set pieces. But. And two against like. Yeah. yeah why we like... don't staff up the team with like pro proper people uh, that would like, for example, would like to make the team improve on set pieces, on defending. I don't know. It, I wonder like. Someone like Karambe, for example, he has been a midfielder in his in the past. Why he doesn't put the, the jersey on and go in trainings to say, okay, you have to position yourself in there, you have to position your body like that, you have to be smarter with the ball, you have to be, I don't know. He has he has won the World Cup, he has won the Champions League. You can find that on the market. Staff member aren't the most expensive people to find. There's, yeah, the, I the, feel the, like we have to have somebody that is maybe maybe it's not working out well, but I mean the stink that Marinaki made for Nottingham Forest that they needed to have a set piece coach to make that type of stink and we don't have one. I find that I find that like maybe ours is just less competent than the one they hired. I don't know, but I feel like we have to. There's got <laughs> unless the coach prefers to do his own set piece instruction. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It looks like we have a zone mark again. Does it look like yeah, you guys it's a Portuguese zone coach. Marking? It's Portuguese, and it's driving me nuts. Uh, but, yeah, maybe – I mean, it could be the – like different co – coach. some coaches prefer to handle set pieces on their own. They don't want a separate person to do set piece. Maybe Carvajal's like that. I don't know. But I would find it, like, really hard to believe when when there was just so much news about Marinaki's forcing the coaching staff to hire a set piece coach that we wouldn't have one here. But I don't know. It's, it's not. It's I'm not, not disagreeing the, that. Said again. It's not a tall team. It's not a tall team. Yeah. Like we suffer no. on set pieces, and I think actually today against Gifisiad, the delivery was quite good from our side offensively. Um, Fortunis has been a little bit shitty with his set pieces the last few games, uh, but but today I thought like his free kick um, execution was pretty damn good. Um, on the defensive side, I, I think it's it's a combination of the fact that we are a short team. Like bringing in Ibora, yeah. like one of the main reasons, one of the top reasons we brought him in was height plus experience. Yeah, um, and just we we don't we don't have that, and we suffer. And then is the fact that we've changed coaches so many times in the past two seasons that when when you're constantly chopping and changing and and you know telling the players to defend in a different way on set pieces, it's going to go wrong. Um, voila, that, that, that's what I think about that. There, there's a comment also from Ben. Ben, I want to give a shout out to Ben DeRosia, actually, who I, yeah, Ben DeRosia, thank you very much for subscribing to, to our Patreon as well. Newest member uh, is asking a question here. Is the centre-back from Atalanta coming soon? Uh, you're referring to Jose Palomino, 34, 35 year old. I hope not, my friends. Likewise. Personal, yeah. Person, I think we all agree on that one. This is a 30, 34 year old, 35 year old player that was very, very good. Um, played next to some up and coming defenders like QT Romero, who plays for Tottenham now. Um, I'm, I'm probably missing others, but. This is a player that's way past his 
his good years. He's played 30 minutes football this season, didn't play much last season, basically a player that hasn't played football for over a season and a half. Uh, I wouldn't be too... I wouldn't be particularly happy if that was our option, let's say, at centre-back. If it's paired with somebody else, I, I, just, I, know, I just can't see it. Not for me. Not for me. Um, there, there was a tweet from Fabrizio the other day, but I think even he said that that's not doesn't look like that's happening anymore because they're asking for like two million or something, and his contract's no, it, up. It would have only been if he was free. The, the guy's on the wrong side of of thirty. He has an injury. Do you remember when we did the deep dive on Versalico and his injury <laughs> list was like that? Palomino's is like that too. Plus the doping scandal. You want to deal with that too? Like this guy, this guy hasn't played football in a year and a half because of the doping scandal. In the end, I don't think they ever, I don't think he was ever found guilty. I don't remember reading news about it. But like if this guy had to dope to stay on the level, that's not a good sign for a guy that is like already in the twilight of his career. I want no part of that. And he was a beast. He was a beast in the time he played, even in the time he played last season before he was benched. Like his data is really good. But yeah. Do you really think you're going to get that now? No. The, the We've already taken too many flyers this year on injured players and players that haven't played football. Like, I think over half the players we've brought in have been cases like that. If you include Bian Cohn, if you include Omar Richards, now uh, um, Gelson, uh, Gelson Martin, technically, because he hadn't played a lot of football before coming to us. It's, too, it's just too many gambles, too many gambles, especially for a guy that's a short-term fix. That's not a fix at all. Yeah, I, I want to say I the wanna... name, uh, Gerson Martins. Can we talk about what it yeah, is? Yeah, it, it, it definitely like there's a lot of individual performances that I want to talk about. Um, yep. I, I want to close the loop on the defense and just bring this comment up from Gerasimus official. It says Eretos is not bad. He's had some elite games for us this year. He's also had some bad luck like today. Those cards were soft. He also needs a complimentary class center back next to him. Um, I think you hit on a lot of good points there, Gerasimus. The central defensive partnership for me has just been an issue for far too long. There's not a good, like an ideal chemistry. And I, I, I do believe that Retos has done enough to earn his position as a as one of the one of the three centre backs at Olympiagos. I'm I think we're all surprised that he's gone this long this season without getting injured knock on wood that was the concern right one of the major concerns none going into this season none of us ever expected this player to give us anything let's be real even some of the the hosts like the co-hosts on this show beginning of the season for me he's one of the best players in this team showed leadership again in the games against Ghent was absolutely instrumental to our defense in terms of getting us through into the Europa League group stages it has to be said this is a player that hasn't played the last three, four years because of injuries. He's been plagued with injuries. This this kid that we sold at 18. And, and so let's just think about that a little bit, that this is the first full season that he's had for years. Is very is normal that he's going to have a bit of a slump, in my in my opinion. Whether the cards today were soft, I think they were soft. The first one and the second one. But I agree with what Marshall said earlier as well. And you you can't be naive. We know what's happening in the league. We know they're going to try and find something. So he needs to mentally figure that out as well. Is what I have to say about yeah. about Retos. But I, you know, I'm definitely. Definitely in the supporters camp there. For that was for me one of the one of the three. He has to be one of the three. We need to find another two. Yeah. Also, the fact that it, it reminds me of Usainuba at the end, what he what when he was struggling with the shitty cards he was getting because of not being able to control his nerves, and that's what I wanted to say with the staff earlier because you need to have. I don't. I don't know because when we had like Avram on the staff. At first, I was like, okay, maybe he can help the defenders uh, to play with their strengths and avoid playing on their weaknesses. But the guy was like always screaming on the bench, getting caught as a staff member. So it's not really useful. And when you have a, a defender like Bad that leaves 
with the impression of him not being able to control his nerve. And then you see Grechos being super good in the summer, as you say, because in the summer, a part of being good, he was like very calm. He wasn't making yeah. those falls. He wasn't conceding shitty and dangerous falls next to the area. But the, the, the most he played and the most he was like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because he's playing along to enjoy so much that loves to play dirty and making falls and hop in his mouth and stuff. But it's not red sauce. When you see it, see him doing that, it's not his style. Like he's, uh, I don't know how to say that, he's, he's a elegant defender and he's not due to do that. The, the other center back probably would like who would would need to be the, the 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 tough one or the bad guy one. I don't know. Uh, just to support what Martial said, if we're comparing Retzos to the other center backs in Greece, he has the best distribution stats. Period of all center backs in Greece, the best pass accuracy, long pass. Most creative passes, most XG created, build up XG we're talking about. He's the best ball distributor in Greece as far as center backs are concerned. We haven't had one like that since Semedo. He's not Semedo. That's a different story. But I'm saying if we're talking about ball distribution capability, we've talked about since Semedo left that we didn't really have somebody that could that could do that for us, except outside of Hussein Uba. And also, uh, when, when it comes to his like defensive capabil capabilities, He's uh, number three overall among center backs in Greece for defensive dual wins, right? You know who's ahead of him? Kalogeropoulos and Mukudi, who are mm -hmm. who are both very good defenders on the defensive side of the ball. And Kalogeropoulos has been fantastic this year, unfortunately for us. But you know that's a that's a discussion for another time. Retsos has also been not that bad in the air. A lot of people complain that Retsos isn't as good in the air, but he's still top 10 in Greece. If we're talking about win percentage, especially in our own box, top five center back in Greece. So I, I, I know that we talk about like, oh, this player isn't good enough for Libyakos this or Libyakos that. But if we're talking about compared to, if we're comparing the talent that we have compared to other teams in Greece, that's false. Retsos is as good, if not better, than any other center back that's in Greece. Maybe defensively, he doesn't have as much as he ha as much as certain players like Vida uh, in the box. Maybe he's less physical than Vida. Maybe maybe not as good as as Mukudi or or even Kaloyeropoulos, which is a shame to say because he came out of our academy. But to say that Retos isn't good enough for us now is is absolutely false. You need to have a better person next to him, though. And if you don't have a good player next to another center back, then the whole center back pairing falls apart. You need to have two players that can work off of each other. And we don't have somebody next to us or next to next to Rezzo that that can play off of him. We need somebody like Palomino, but younger, in my opinion. It has to be someone complimentary. That's the thing. Like, and, and right. there are comments here. Um, unfortunately, Galagiropoulos hasn't been sold. Galagiropoulos is on loan. He signed a new contract. The question is, like, again, it's about pairing. It's about creating the right chemistry. A lot of people in the chat have been talking about, you know, what Ari mentioned, which is a different profile type of defender next to Retos, uh, somebody more aggressive, um, somebody more experienced, but not Palomino. The question is with with Galogeropoulos. Galogeropoulos has a lot of similar traits to Retos. Dare I say, actually, this Argentinian kid that we're looking at, um, Gaston Hernandez. Like I, I said it earlier. I, I saw him and I thought he has a lot of similar traits to Retzos. So, short, I mean, let, you know, let's say what? He's short. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, like, uh, you, you'll have a look at him eventually if, and, you know, let's see what happens there. And we've still got half a month and, you know, until the window closes, but let's let's see what happens there. Um, Retos Peroso wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad, but then he got you know he got injured and then he disappeared. And now it appears his his loan Peroso's loans getting getting cut. But uh, anyway, maybe enough about Retos. You mentioned the name earlier, Marshall Gelson Martins. What have you got to say about him? So I was uh, very pleased by what he did because as a lot of people, I was expecting him to play in the next month, like not 
now, but man, he has a lot of energy and I, I don't know how to say that, but the, the thing is when we've seen so many players come to Olympiacos, I have come to a conclusion, which is you don't need time to see if this guy is going to be good or correct for Olympiacos. Like the first 10 balls this guy touches will define probably how good he will be for the club. And from what I saw on Jelson, at least he can dribble. He has some speed. He know how to use the ball because the, the, the cross he did was very good to a Arabi. And I have... No, I have no doubt that it will be useful. I, I'm not sure it will be a master's signature. It won't be probably a crack for Olympiacos. But he's, he has passed that first step. So many players fall in, like Solbaken, De La Fuente, Bowler. Uh, I don't know, so many wingers and offensive players we had at the club that were, were stuck in that first phase of uh, that first goal, that first assist, and he unlocked that on the second game he played. And he has some, some, he's in shape, like he's not in his best shape, but he's in shape. He's not that fat. Probably <laughs> he's, he's, he's ready to be a starter and to be stepped off after an, uh, one hour. But it's very positive what he, what he did. And you can see that on the Greek league, his technical qualities will make differences. Will it, will it make differences against big club? I don't know. But it will make differences, dif differences on the whole season against smaller teams, at least until the play playoffs. And then we'll see. He had an assist today, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that's he's only played, what, 15 minutes with the club, getting his first assist? That's not bad. To, to, he got subbed on. Uh, when did he get subbed on the first time? Uh, was, it, was it Ike or Bonathan Igos when he got subbed on the first time? I want to I say, no, it was, it was Ike. It was, uh, okay, there you go. So 14, 14, 15 minutes, and he got an assist already? That's that's not bad for a guy that, that does need to lose a couple kilos. <laughs> but, it, hey. it, it was a beautiful cross for a lot of his goal, the one that counted. But yeah, he to me, to me it also looks like he can he can shed a couple of kilos. Can <laughs> <laughs> Gelson skateboard, Stefano? <laughs> Legend. Uh like to me, to me, doesn't look match fit. Like there was a um, there was a cross field ball that came over to him, like on the left hand side, and you saw his first touch. Like normally, I'd expect it to kind of glue to his foot in front of him, but it went a little bit behind him, and he made up for it with his pace. But but so clearly, fast. like yeah, like clearly to me, it's a player that can destroy the league, oh, yeah. if and when he's fit. And, um, I mean, Marshall, you said it's maybe not a player that's going to become a, a crack or like a um, top, top player for the team over time. But if I'm not mistaken, we signed him now two and a half years, two and a half year contract for three million in the end. It's a quality player if he can get it back to his standards. And we'll probably see the best of him next season, hopefully. But judging from what we saw today, like the guy can contribute immediately, con like contrary to some of the other players you mentioned that didn't contribute anything but a skateboard. So um, enough with the skateboard jokes because... What, you know what's funny is like when you see a striker like El Arabi, how is it possible? Uh, you basically just have to put a cross in the right spot because the cross Martins did today, it was good, but it wasn't amazing. It's a regular cross, a uh, proper winger with international football should be able to make. And it makes it like even uh, for, uh, I don't know, uh, it makes me more angry when you see like Scarpa, Solbaken, uh, De La Fuente, uh, Huijo not being able on those games to even snatch a goal or an assist because the quality you have around you is very big and you don't need time to uh, to adapt you you just need you need time to be uh, fitter to have more rhythm but it's it reminded me of the first uh, one game he played in Limassol the at the very first moment you knew he was going to be a good player at that some time with Gelson it's not as good as that, but the cross he did was probably better than 
than whole Slovakian did for Olympiakos since the summer, for example. I don't remember Slovakian even crossing like that. No. no. But can we also remark on too, like not just, I mean, with Gelson and also with uh, with Navarro, like these are two players where it's like very clear where in the system they fit. You saw the runs today with Gelson Martin. You saw what he can offer. Both of these guys, they fit the system. Carvajal's system isn't special, right? It's not It's not as complicated as like Martinez where we were trying to figure out different shapes, what he does because he mixes things up constantly. Like Carvajal, it's, it's Portuguese. It's very – we know he's going to throw things down the wings. He's going to use our wing backs, and it's just about getting volume into the penalty area. So bringing in, bringing in a guy like Gelson Martins who can stretch the width who actually can cross pretty well and and lightning quick and has great footwork too to to go inside it fits right in same thing with Fran Navarro versus other players that we've brought in even this summer we were like all right you know I, I felt like every scouting report every deep dive I did was I don't know how this guy is going to fit in you know this guy has this skill set but we're playing like this how does he fit in here I don't know these two these guys are ve it's very clear where they fit even even some of the other guys that we've been rumored with when, when we just briefly look at some of the data that gets shared in the Patreon channel, by the way, um, some of the data that we look at there, and we when I looked at some of the film just early, like very early on, it's very clear to see where they fit. Like I, maybe that's one thing because, because Carvajal's style really isn't anything special. It's very easy to tell like what we're doing and where we're going with things. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's easier to find players that are for that. But like it, these two guys, like, fit and i know we'll probably talk about navarro later because there was a little bit of disagreement in across social media and even in our patreon chat about him but like both of these guys like fit to a t what is going on in this system so i just wanted to remark on that at least and i also want to apologize i think it's to mike scob who is who was uh not michali michael i do apologize my father is a michali my son is a michali so when i saw when i saw like uh, me, Yota, and he on the, <laughs> I didn't look at any of the rest of the letters. My dyslexia kicked in and I just, so sorry, buddy. Um, we got another donation from my namesake, Costas Golias. Thank you so much, Costa, for that. Um, that's, that's quite a few beers that you've bought us. I think you bought us like two rounds of beers there at least for the whole crew. Thank you. Also. So thank you. Thank you doubly. The, the, the name is, I was going to say, like, thank you. Doubly, Costa, indeed. Says, I missed the game today. Sounds like I missed a lot. Catched up with the show here. It's funny that with all this, we are still only at minus six from the top. And Balk, Ayk have to, uh, Balk have to play Ayk. Balk have to play Bonifan Aykos as well. You think we can get close or we'll, we'll see more crap in the next games? Um, I'm certain we're going to see more crap. But I think the league is also far from finished um it's if it if it finishes i remember saying that earlier on in the season if it finishes the league this season because i i don't know like there, there was something out of today's win that gives me i won't say hope but it showed me that there's there's life there's there's still some there, there's still some yeah life the energy there to to give it everything and i feel like the more blatant the mistakes that are happening in the last few games, I feel like it's galvanizing the players to give more. So I, I, it's, it's far from over. Six points behind is nothing, but we have to, we have to go out there and it's war. Every game is, is a battle. Every game is life or death. If we if we're serious about contending, not about winning the league, about contending and challenging to win the league this season, we have to go out into every game like it's like it's war. Is the only way. Like we, and that doesn't mean go out and start kicking everyone and being overly aggressive. You have got to be smart. You got to have a good battle plan. You got to have leaders out on the pitch, and, and you've you've got to have luck. And, and and that's it. Like the fans can't support, sadly, like the, because otherwise the fans would be behind the team. But I don't think the league's over. I think that the powers that be think the league's over and they're going to try their best to put it out of our reach early on. 
it's what they tried to do today but we can't let that happen the main the main opponent is ourselves like a lot of team says that that the main opponent is beating ourselves but we we need to avoid also our 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 mistakes but we need to we need to win derby we need to win derbies anyway yes this is an interesting question um because there's been a lot of chatter about Podence. Even um, I saw Vervales talking about Podence as well. Um, I don't. I think it was either a tweet or um, or something on Instagram. On but he, or maybe he, okay, maybe that was it on the okay. show. I just saw it. I think it was on Instagram. Um, uh, anyway, from Andreas Yorgopoulos. Uh, Hello, guys. What do you think about Podence? It seems like his body has sustained some serious injury at Wolves. He's not the same. Overweight, loss of speed, and explosive. I don't think he's like overweight like that, but he definitely put muscle on. The guy definitely put some muscle on when he came back. And he started off like fantastic. I mean, we had I, the when we did that Superman image of him on Instagram, it was nine goals, seven assists he had at the time. Um, uh, something like that. I'll have to look it up. Um, I don't remember the exact uh, um, the exact amount. But anyway, I mean, he started off very well. Then he had an injury. He played on an injury before the break. And since then, he has not been the same. He's just looked off. From, from the movement onto the field and the decision-making. Like uh, uh, in Ike, there was uh, there was an attack that was down the left in, in their penalty area uh, or just outside of the penalty area. And he could have played the ball first time uh, – I, I'm 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 forgetting who was running next to him. Maybe it was Masuras that was next to him. But he tries to dribble through two Ike defenders instead of just playing the ball the first time next to him. And he's making a lot of these like um, just bad decisions uh, that he didn't early on in the season with us. And he played really well. But I I really do think that he still has an injury. And I think he was playing on an injury. And I wonder if it made it worse. Honestly, the um, the inconsistency doesn't surprise me. It was one of the things I said when we brought him in, or we brought him back in on loan, that is, this season. Even in his first stint with us, for me, it's a player that can create magic during a game. I think, why did Pedence get transferred to the Premier League? Two, three reasons. One, he's got Jorge Mendes as his agent. And two, he played a good quali qualification round against Krasnodar, scored a lovely goal, and scored another goal against Tottenham. That game, the first game, game uh, match day one of the, the Champions League, we were 2-0 down. And Valbuena sets him off for that goal just before halftime. Uh, that's, what, that's what propelled him to the Premier League. Those two games and his, and his, his manager, his agent, I'm not saying the guy is not talented, but th but there's something there's something about his his mental toughness, or I don't know what it is. His body during the games he disappears. He did it. Yep. He did it during his first stint. Mm -hmm. He disappears. It, you know, back during the first stint, it was 30, 40 minutes. You're like, is he on the pitch? Has he touched the ball? Nothing. And today he just seemed off tune getting you know knocked off the ball by Yanis Masuras <laughs> on the other side of the pitch so i don't know i don't know like J Jelson Martins albeit coming on at the end seemed more lively than him he was yeah he was fresher and maybe their defense was tired but it's it's a bit worrying are we going to activate any release clause by option I don't know. That's that's another question. But it's only not if Mendez has the sale lined up. If Mendez has something lined up, then we activate it. Get the quick, get the quick profit. He's not going to stay in Greece. Come on, man. Re remember when he we he first got here? Like the first thing he said, and he was like, "I didn't expect to be back here so early in my career, but I'm here." Like, 
you know that's uh that's that i mean that's that's the situation to me i mean look the falling out i watched him when he was at wolves and he was kind of the same i mean he would have great games for them and then he would have games where he disappeared and they had the same complaints that we did yeah but i think he has quality look it's the the what you what you brought up gosta in terms of the goals that he had krasnodar and then and then spurs uh, were definitely big highlights, but like the big thing too is how people saw him progressing the ball. He could progress the ball forward very well for us. And then don't forget how many times we didn't have any other wingers on the team back then, especially once uh, Cristo de Lopros got hurt. Once Lazaros was gone and he had that season ending injury, we had no other winger that could do anything. We had Nahuel who like probably wouldn't even play high school here. You know what I mean? Like garbage player. But Podence, like there were, there were moments when if we were playing like crap he was the only guy that it seemed like could kind of make something from nothing uh, especially when we were killing a game he could dribble on people so that was highlighted and that's i think also a reason that he made the jump to the premier league to wolves especially not just because he was portuguese but th those were those were those were big pros for him as a player and we see that here with us too the my issue with him aside from the disappearing act aside from the fact that maybe his shot power still hasn't really um improved it's his decision making that has gotten noticeably worse noticeably worse in the final third holding the ball too long things that i would have expected a player that played in the premier league to do way better with uh in my in my opinion i still think he's a talented player and i still think he'll do a lot for us but um you know that's that's where i that's where my concern is with Pudence, at least some are we gonna have, some people heavily disagree apparently as well uh <laughs> sorry marshall no no i was tr trying to drop on another topic but yeah on, on podense I, I don't know yeah the the fact he's playing injured or at least uh not 100 percent seems uh visible for me because the, the 100 percent of his game is based on what he can do on the on the first two three steps of his playing including uh dribbles and differences it will make so but he has no competition to be honest it's like no, Fortunis. Does, does Fortunis have competition in this team in terms of number of player yes but in terms of level or importance no no but um no i i, I don't want to be overly harsh maybe just to end this discussion on Podense, i said it when i went to west ham to watch to watch the game and I was texting all of you guys. I said, there's something wrong with him. Like, he can't run. I, so I don't know if there's, like, some kind of hidden injury or something long-term that we don't know, something that's being managed. But um, but that's something that, that, that has stuck with me from that game. <laughs> Lucky's got my last kills with sometimes, man. <laughs> But also, like you have last made a comment on uh, on our Twitter about um, about Cadillacs and and El Arabi, but I think he <laughs> he he also um, he also said he bit his tongue afterwards. <laughs> uh, I, I I appreciate it, like. <laughs> also, I have a feeling that the Wolves club in general was killed, if I can say that, when Jimenez had that massive yeah. school injury. Yeah. Because yeah. he was so good at that time, and I, I'm pretty sure Podense was almost leaving off that because he has a, an amazing striker to play along with. Yeah. And when Jimenez went uh, injured, big injury, uh, the whole team in general started to be to decline, and Podense included. And that makes sense. Uh, yeah. But when when you watch what you watched Wolverhampton at the time, they could have almost go for the Champions League spot over the years with more stability. They had put some bases on, but that's where you see Premier League is so tough and good. From Adis Galabatis, the question here, guys, who would you renew, Masuras or Podents? Are we are we required to pick one or the other? Because technically one is alone. The others the other would be renewal. So I'm if we had to like choose whether to renew Masuras or purchase Podence, I would say purchase Podence or purchase, purchase Alexandropoulos. Well, yeah. Well, that's a 
I mean, that may, maybe maybe like that's we a think meme. Like that's a, that would be a meme poll. That would be a meme poll, like Masura Superdense. Do you know what Aris Galamatis? I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna make a poll because you asked for it. Why not for shits and giggles? Uh, it's a tough question. Let's. I'm going to put that up there. You see, Gate 7 International, ladies and gentlemen, we deliver for you, the fans. Uh, the, the poll's coming. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. There's been hundreds of you coming into the show this, um, this evening, Europe time. Make sure you hit the like button. Can't stress enough how important that is in terms of how it helps us to engage and find other fans across the world. So it takes... Two seconds, identify the thumbs up, click, done. Bosch, as uh, as Marshall likes to say. Can I can I get a French Bosch? Can I just get a Bosch from you, Marshall? Bosch. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to jump on another player, maybe the last one. The... We have to talk about Youssef tonight. We do have to talk about Youssef because the, the more I think about it and uh, I... I'm pretty sure it's one of the things that costed Martinez's job, like putting Yusef uh, into the bin like that. We were all mourning about Yusef wage, Yusef's wage this summer. He wasn't ready, he wasn't offering anything. But the, the difference in terms of level uh, as a striker he has when he's in form compared to the league in general. I wouldn't say he's the best striker right now in Greece because when you see Garcia, for example, but he's so the the high Q level he has in terms of football is very high, and we have to benefit from that. And I do believe that part of the chances we have to win the title depends on him, on his ability not to injure, not to be injured, and to play back to back games, even if it's not ninety minutes, like to come in. To uh, to start the game, to start the game, to come in, to start, to come off, and stuff. That's my thought on it. I would agree with you. Like I, for I don't think he's worth two million as far as salary goes. But like, if we look at what he scored, right? What has he played? Five hundred minutes this season. He has five goals. Uh, if we're looking at like goal per uh goal per interval a goal every 100 minutes is better than anybody else any on the team except maybe Costas Fortunis if we're talking goal contributions so he definitely should be like used more like regardless of what we're talking about value for dollar value for euro um that's a different conversation but just like relegating him to the B team or the bench uh, is inexcusable uh, because he's he's a better option even if he can't play 90 minutes like he should be at least being used kind of like Valbuena was especially in in like the later seasons you know what I mean come on because he's he's an impact player and we don't have many of those on the bench unfortunately so I'm with you there I think the whole discussion around the Arabi is so like tainted around his contract the renewal and also just blatantly our inability to to replace him like long term to find the next the we next want, Olympiago so. striker after him for me it's clear he's one of the best strikers this club's ever seen um i i don't want to say i understand martinez uh to a point because i think that the last few seasons yusef has come back into pre-season training in the summers and it's taken him a long time to to find his fitness to find the groove he's you know, your legs are heavy after a preseason, and in the the qualification games, you just you couldn't do it. You know, against yeah. against physical teams and you know younger teams like Ghent, it was tough for him. Uh, did we discard him too quickly? Possibly, yes. But I think it's it's showing that the the bad decision or one of the many bad decisions this summer was signing Jovetic to play ahead of him. Yeah. That's the mistake. You That's either spend money on true. a striker, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this now. Uh, I don't think we've ever said this on the show or we've ever commented on it on socials. But Marshall, you met Yusef in the summer, and yeah. he told us straight up: if Olympiagos wants a striker, they have to pay for a striker. That's it, and he's he's 100 right. 
if we wanted to find a replacement, you've got to pay money for a striker. As as decent as El Kabi has been for us in terms of production and goals. If he's you not combine done, El Kabi and Jovetic's wage, and you, you give it to that a two or three million fee, uh, you can get a striker like from Eastern Europe or I don't know from a a, a good scorer coming from Bulgaria, uh, a, a move like Despotov, for example, but not as not a winger but a striker. Well, we could get another Bakambu for that money. Yeah, true, true. You know what I mean? Bakambu was like, the that's wage and fee. Imagine the season with Bakambu. Oh, this would be a different story. But that's I put. I think these days that's more on Bakambu than it was us. So yeah, true, true, true. No, it's hundred percent responsible of that. But you're but, but you're right. I think with Bakambu, this is a you know. I don't no, think we're having a, some of these conversations. What we haven't been able to do also is to attract a player like Hemvila. Not Hemvila himself, but the kind of player that is uh, struggling in a lower ranking French club, for example, but is still playing because Hemvila, when he came, he was playing back to back games with uh, Saint Etienne. Right. He was playing in a team that was fighting to not to be demoted, but. Uh, it's you know the quality itself was there and on the striker we we decided to sign your vintage that was almost injured since he was born because every every club he was in is uh it was reputed to be injured every time and we decided to sign them to sign him anyway but it's an it's an endless debate the the the, the thing we won't replace is El Arabi's passion for football in general. It comes close to Valbuena's passion for football. And that's why I love El Arabi despite his contract, because he do loves football. Unlike, unlike a lot of players, not only in Olympiacos, unfortunately. Yeah, well, well the question from Mateo here, it's, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a question. Bakambu is, is better than El Kabi, but that's... I agree. I agree. Okay, well, been running over an hour, ladies and gents. Um, let's do man of the match and coaches grade. The vote is live. If you're following us on YouTube, you can take part in the poll, participate. We've got four options there. It's El Arabi, Masuras, Carvalho, and other. I, I, just a quick shout, Carvalho was actually... More than decent, I thought today. He would have had two assists if one of the goals wasn't chalked off. I think that was a um, Carvalho across for the El Arabi goal that was chalked off. So I want to give a small shout out yeah. to him. Um, we didn't talk about Zolakis at all, but that 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 was a surprise. But you know, we can talk about him maybe another time if we see him. the The goalkeeper issue isn't going away, so we'll talk about that another time. Uh, let's start alphabetically. Ari, man of the match, coach is great. Um, man of the match for me, I, I would pick, I would go with Masuras. Um, should have had two goals today. Endless effort. I'm going to reward him for that. Um, I don't want to think about it too much. I'm just going to go with the first, the first thing I, that I think about. And then for, for coaches grade, um, well, side note on Masuras too. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that he's like stepping up also. Like we know he's limited in terms of his footballing ability, right? Like he's not Fortuny. He's not, he doesn't have the skill that some of those players do, but he sacked up and he stepped up ever since, ever since the, the, the travesties that have occurred with the officiating, we keep saying like, all right, you, you know, when we talk about the locker room chaps that have happened, we're like, you guys have to step this up and, and do this on the field, step up. And he did it in the keep law. You know, he's always, this guy always, uh, uh, he, he always gives everything. And I, I do appreciate that for him, uh, uh from him, I should say. So, and then, um, from, f uh, for Carvajal, um coach's grade i mean he we should have had more goals you can't i can't blame him for the referee decisions um 
I, I, it's it's hard for me to to get on him for 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 player mistakes and and referee mistakes. So um, we end up getting the win. Let I be, let I be super sub. Maybe I give him a, I give him a B plus. I didn't I didn't like the Kini start out of out of uh, uh, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I was surprised by Carvalho, but. Yeah, he didn't have a bad game today, so I'll, I'll give him a B plus. Okay, um, my man of the match is Yusef, just because um, super sub performance, and I'm 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 being unfair to Masuras, but just uh, the impact that he had on the game, and if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have won it. Plain and simple. So I'm giving him my man of the match. <coughs> Excuse me, and coach's grade. Some bold decisions. Um, Zolakis being put in goal uh, today. I thought I thought that Zolakis had nothing to gain from this from this match, only to lose because uh, you know we we lose this game or we drop points and he leaks goals. He's going to get shot on. You know we win this game and everything goes well, then he won't get any praise. So that was a bit strange. Um, but you know otherwise the manager had to deal with things like not having Hesse in midfield. Um, so. You know, in the end, as we said, Carvalho did pretty well. And overall, I just thought the the, the game management was better today. It had impact. Um, so I think uh, I think for me, it's also um, B plus for um, for Carvajal. And actually, no, I'm going to give him an A. And you know why I give him an A is because his comments at the end, his comments in the um, in the in the not the post match press conference, but the immediate kind of comment that he gives after the game where he was very like very passionate and very clear in what he said about you know he said in i've been coaching for 15 20 years been football in all my life i've never seen anything like what i'm seeing here in greece and greece or like greek football needs to show olibiagos respect and not only not just olibiagos but the players that play football so i really liked his intervention at the end and um you know if he if he managed to inspire me with that, then I hope he can have a, you know equal kind of impact when it comes to inspiring the players for the game on Wednesday and what what's left to come for the rest of the season. Masha, well, uh, game of the player of the game would be El Arabi for me because. Uh, he stepped in, could have almost had an hat trick uh, today. Uh, is on a mission to me. It's clear. It's clear. He's on a mission for to prove many things, probably, but also to make Olympiacos win the title. Uh, Masuras would be my MVP of January, even if it's only half of the month. But I'm I'm sure he will be as good as he has been recently over the the, 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 the end of the month, because also he is on a mission. It, it, it could be a different mission, like to have another contract at Olympiacos to get attraction from foreign leagues. I don't know, but he's on a mission and it's, it's hard to Carvajal to take advantage of that. Uh, because when you have so many players out of contract, they can't play for the club or for themselves to get a move elsewhere or to get a renewal. So it's up to the coach to take advantage of that. And speaking of the coach, I would have a B as a grade because he sticks to, to his choices with Carva, Carvalho playing again after the cup game. And I think he was right to do so, even if I'm not a big fan of Carvalho. His game was more than decent. And we've been uh, uh, angry so many times before with players not getting a uh, back-to-back -back game to prove they can offer something. And I think Carvajal is trying to do that with Carvalho. So we will probably see at the end of January if this guy is able to offer something to the club. And I agree with you on the comments. And I hope, really hope the player will stick together around that topic, that the fact that they've been deprived of, of results after an hard work, because after all, they are workers, like they have a, they do work on a daily basis and stuff. And when you get robbed 
PK or goals, even if it's legit, if the, 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 the players feel that it's too harsh, the coach can create something around that. Like Lucescu clearly would create something around that. He has been doing it since, since his coaching power. So let's hope Carvajal is, will be able to do that because the taste of this, if we snatch the title, will be, will be insanely good at the end. Like one of the best since a long time. But it would be honest. super sad, to be honest with you, for the state of the league if Olympiacos still win it despite all the chaos and the nonsense that we've gone through this season. That just goes to tell you how terrible the league actually is. But I, I, I'm not that I'm disagreeing with that. I would still enjoy it a lot more, especially in the context. But that would be pretty sad. For me, at least. um let's see I'll, we'll close up with one one more what is this guys we have a greek channel commentary mateo jr greek channel you mean um like commentary in greek mateo is that what you're referring to um if if you're asking about greek commentary the channel we do is in is in english um, no, Lombro, I'm not showing your questions for Martial. Sorry, <laughs> game over. I have to, but no, the, because we're we're myself. trying to grow the name of Libyakos and also Greek football outside of Greece. That's why we do everything in English. But you can respond in Greek. We always respond to everybody that speaks to us in Greek. Doesn't matter on social media or the platform. Um, we have no problem doing that. So, by all means, please. If if you want if you want to speak to us in Greek, we'll uh, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm we'll, sure. we'll close it up on this last question. This version of Pedens or uh, Fetfatsidis that look like he had two mortgages. First, uh, which of all, guys do you prefer? Fetfatsidis today had an assist. I have to mention that. And secondly, I would say Pedense and Fetfatsidis. I would take current Fetfatsidis 100 times over. 80% of wingers we've signed on the last five years, I would say that. But that's not the question. The question is fat Fetfatsidis. Like this guy just took out a second mortgage on his house. He's in dire straits. He had the, he, you know, he was, you know, th the hair was he thinning. Wasn't that bad. He, stressed. he just missed the goal against Ayek, but overall he wasn't that bad to me. It was decent uh, and you needed time because the season he did with Aris was super good after that. It was. And we decided yep. to, we, we told him to fuck off to Salindic. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just say, like, shameless plug for Patreon one more time, guys. One of the nice things about Patreon is that if you sign up for Patreon, you get to see a video of Lambro. Ari, you did the interview. Please, like, sell this. Oh, yeah, you, we did the uh, uh, it's part of the Patreon expanded content tier. We did the late night with Lambro. And I think we should do that with every one of the hosts because that was a lot of fun uh, asking Lambro all sorts of questions. There was no guideline of what it could have been anything. People asked the most <laughs> absurd questions. Um, Ryan, um, uh, Lambro had to give some dating advice, I think, towards the end of it, too. So it was really good. So you guys should check that out. Um, it's it was it, it's fun. Another reason to join Patreon. We do a lot of fun stuff. We do the enhanced analysis as well. We do fun interviews with other people as well. We do outside of the realm of Olympiacos. We interviewed um, Despina Panagulias. We interviewed the president, the former president of Huracan, where we signed Jose from. And we have more. We have more great interviews that are lined up that are coming. So we're really excited to do those. And. Um, but yeah, there's some great stuff on Patreon. Just the WhatsApp, I'm going to be honest with you, the WhatsApp chat is enough. Uh, I make fun of everybody with AI images, especially Lombro. He gets the the butt of most of them. So join join WhatsApp and I'll make you an AI portrait. How about that? It's uh, Join the WhatsApp group and then we'll tease you and you can, you can go for more afterwards. <laughs> there you go. I uh, think that's everything, right, Costa? Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go and smash Panathinaikos on Wednesday now. How about that? All right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this is Gate Seven International by the fans for the fans. As always, 
Check out Patreon. One last time, one last plug. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Help us grow the community. It gets bigger and bigger every day. You witness the growth happening during the show. So thank you guys very much for your support. And we look forward to talking to you next time. Next match is second round. Keep it low versus Panathinaikos at home. So hopefully we'll have a team or have uh, something fun to talk about and have a podcast after that. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Gatima, <laughs> <laughs>